Good morning, Wauwatosa West. We are your hosts, Annabelle Wooster and Alina Zhang. Welcome, Welcome to, to TW, TW Today. Today. On Wednesday, the final verdict in the Waukesha County Christmas Parade trial was reached and Daryl Brooks was found guilty of 76 charges, including six counts of intentional homicide and 61 counts of recklessly endangering safety with the use of a dangerous weapon. Additionally, he was also found guilty of six counts of fatal hit and run, two counts of felony bail jumping, and one count of misdemeanor domestic battery. He faces a mandatory sentence to life in prison for his conviction. This trial gained a lot of attention in the news because Brooks chose to represent himself instead of accepting the defense lawyer provided for him. Each homicide count carries a mandatory life sentence while each of his 61 counts of reckless endangerment carries a maximum sentence of 17 and a half year in prison. Brooks did not react as verdicts were read. He mostly put his hand in his folded arms with his elbow on the table. So what goes into a trial? How does a jury operate? What people perform what roles? In Tosa West's very own mock trial club, they cover it all and work to create civically engaged students. Lines of yep. questioning, even before we get there, we'll start with. I like my trial because you get to grow really close with um, other people, um, and it's really interesting to see the different, different aspects of both sides because you can see two different totally sides of the story, and you really figure out that no one really has the truth. So in my trial right now, we just got the case um, last week, um, so right now we're finding out who the pros and cons of all the witnesses, how they're helpful for the defense, how they're helpful for the prosecution, and overall just getting to know the new people in the club as well and having fun while we're doing it. So I've been in the social studies department here at West for this is my ninth year and eighth year of doing mock trial. Um, I think we're focusing on ways that we can be a little better organized than we have in the past so that we're more efficient. We have a limited amount of time that we can meet each week so we want to make the most of it. So that's kind of what we're working on right now. One of the things that's new is uh, Paul Raffel was the attorney coach that was over there. He's actually a former judge, works as a, um, a public defender at Children's Court in Milwaukee County. So just excited to have him. Um, first of all, trial litigation can be so much fun and it can be beautiful in a way. And the second thing, and perhaps the most important for any high school student doing this, is that I could do it. The idea that you could get up in front of a group of people and make a compelling case and try to persuade them and that the world didn't fall apart, just knowing that you were capable of it was what sort of propels people to do it in the next setting that they're in. Act like a big shot. Act like you've been there before and fake confidence for a little bit even when you don't have it. And then eventually it will come to you. And so much of life I think is just getting the fear in the background, it's always going to be there. And it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with how you're prepared. Um, and so a lot of times it's just kind of fake it until you make it. A lot of our students benefit because they're learning about, they're finding their voice and how to you know, become better public speakers and presenters of information. I would definitely recommend people to join mock trial even if they're not interested in going into law specifically. Like personally, I'm not, in tr um, um, I'm not going into law, but it, as a witness, it really helps with public speaking and it's just, it's such, so much fun. I think everyone should experience something similar. For many of our students that are already 18 years old, not only are they eligible to serve on jury, they can also vote. Be sure to check out the article New Tosa West Voters on the Tosa Compass website by senior Camille Sokol. She shares what is motivating students to vote in the election on November 8th. And election day is just around the corner. Make sure to check out the tosacompass.com for tips on how to register as a new voter. Let your voice be heard. But how much do students really know about our government? Find out in this week's episode of On the Street. What's your name? My name is Nora. What's your name? Cassie. What's your name? My name is Natalia. What's your name? Kayla. What's your name? Morgan Bosman. Do you think you could pass the U.S. citizenship test? I think so. 
Do you think you can pass the U.S. citizenship test? What was the question? Do you think you can pass the U.S. citizenship test? I don't know what that is, but I hope I would pass. Do you think you can pass the U.S. citizenship test? Yes. Do you think you can pass the U.S. citizenship test? Well, let's give it a try. Do you think you can pass the U.S. citizenship test? Yes. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? What? <laughs> what are the first the amendments? <laughs> of the Constitution called? Bill of Rights. Wait, I learned this. Hold on. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? And... What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Those would be the Bill of Rights. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Bill of Rights. Oh my god, wait. No, I know what it is. Oh, is it the Declaration of Independence? Okay. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? <laughs> what are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Uh, the, the first 10 amendments? Yes. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Um, in A. <laughs> Wait, the first amendments? How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 14. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 10. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 10. How many amendments does the Constitution have? In total? Yes. Oh, like 30? What is the highest court of the United States? Oh, is it the Supreme Court? What is the highest court of the United States? Judicial. Supreme Court. What is the highest court of the United States? The highest what? Court. Supreme. What is the highest court of the United States? That would be the United States Supreme Court. What is the highest court in the United States? Supreme Court. Who is running for United States Senate to represent Wisconsin on November 8th? Oh, um, it's Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson. Who is running for the U.S. Senate to represent Wisconsin on November 8th? The one who's sitting or like the one who's running? Who's running? Who's running? Uh, Tim Michaels. Who is running for the U.S. Senate to represent Wisconsin on November 8th? Who is running for the U.S. Senate to represent Wisconsin on November 8th? Um, Tim Michaels. Who is running for United States Senate to represent Wisconsin on November 8th? So the candidates for Senate are Ron Johnson and Mandela Barnes. Enough with the, all the talk about politics. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. The, the sports! sports. Sadly, most fall season sports at Tulsa West have come to an end. But girls swimming is still going strong. They will compete in the Greater Metro Conference Championships this Saturday at Wauwatosa East High School. Although fall sports are coming to a close, registration for winter sports is now open. All winter athletes must register online, pay the athlete fees, and make sure they have a current physical form filled out. If you have any questions, you can see Mr. Shrim in the activity office. And lastly, save the date for the start of these winter sports. Boys and girls hockey and girls basketball start on November 7th. And boys basketball, co-ed wrestling, and boys swim and dive all start on November 14th. Go Trojans! As for our regular announcements, HOSA is hosting a blood drive on November 4th. You can find out more by visiting their table at lunch. Alina, did you know that one blood donation can help the lives of three different people? Wow, that's incredible. If you are 16, you are able to donate with parent permission and all donors will need to have a photo ID with them. Make sure to eat and drink a lot the morning of your donation in order for it to be most successful. If you have any questions, you can see Ms. Thompson in room 145. This year, Mr. Kepke and Mrs. Wanta are coordinating an advisory lesson on December 7th. 
Pearl Harbor Day to honor the soldiers we know. If you have a soldier you know and you'd like to honor their service, please complete the Proud of My Soldier form in advisory or look for it in your email. All submissions are due by November 22nd, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And finally, Latin Club is coordinating a fundraiser at the Chipotle on Mayfair Road on November 2nd from 4 to 8 p.m. Why not support a great club by eating some great food? Well, that's all we have for today. See, See you, you next, next week! week.